Okay, great. Greetings and peace. My name is Ashley Kazi Golden, and I'm going to do a short presentation about how to prepare for an APAM conference like a pro. So the topics of discussion today are just a short introduction about who I am, tips for using Zoom, pre-work to get you conference ready, new online features to help you navigate this conference, and lastly, and I think the most important part, reconnecting after the conference. So greetings and peace again. My name is Ashley Kazi Golden. I was a 2017 APM Equity and Inclusion Fellow. I currently work as an educational consultant with Cooper Advisors, and I also work one-on-one -on -one with families about how to incorporate Montessori education within their home. So this presentation highlights just the nuts and bolts about how to make the most of your APM conference. So these are four tips talking about pre-work to get you conference ready, because I think doing the pre-work is super important so you can make the most of the conference. So first, get to know the landscape of the conference. So review policy areas and topics that will be present at the conference. You can add sessions that you're interested in attending and you can keep track of it and you can always change it up to the time of the conference, but it's good to know what's available for you because that ties to the second part of what are you looking to accomplish? Because as a fellow, when I attended for the first time, it can be super overwhelming because there's so many great presenters. There's interest points that run the gambit that you're interested in, and you can take in so much information that when you leave the conference, you're like, wow, that was great but how am I gonna use all this information? So take the time to think through, write it out if you have to, about what do you really wanna gain from this conference experience? Are you looking for a mentor or a collaborator for research? Are you looking for a job or after graduation or an internship? Because I know with COVID and doing things online, that's gonna look a little bit different. So if you come to the conference with something in mind, you're able to pair out all the other noise and focus on what you want to get from it. Third, dig a little deeper. So getting to know the work of the presenters as well as the organizations that will be at APAM can help you, can help you tie what you want to accomplish, accomplish from the conference. So find them on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the social media. So you could get to know what researchers past research have been as well as their current. So you can start building a foundation about the people you might want to reach out to. Staying on top of trending topics is also important. Um, I know it might seem like a lot of work ahead of time, but it will make all the difference when you're able to speak to people, and have these different conversations online, because you'll have talking points and you'll be able to pull something that's relevant from their research to what's currently happening. And lastly, reach out early. I'll talk a little bit later how APAM has a function for you to connect with attendees and presenters but you can also always reach out if a certain session stands out to you, um, if it has a research topic that you're interested in, or if you have done research or are currently doing research that connects, send out an email to the researcher or professor. And if the idea of like cold calling or cold emailing um, a professor or researcher is a little nerve wracking, there is this link so I'm not gonna click it now because the website is under maintenance, but when it's not under maintenance, you will actually be able to see a template about how to talk to professors about their research and to ask if there's any opportunities available with working with them. So it can give you the foundation to maybe write out your own email to reach out ahead of time. Tips for using Zoom. So before I share my four tips, I do want to make note of 
making sure you have the most updated version of Zoom. For many of us, we already had Zoom before COVID hit, but Zoom has made a lot of upgrades since then. So please make sure you have the most updated version so you're able to take part in all the capabilities that APIM has to offer. So my next tip is to silence your desktop notifications and remember to mute. So for a majority of us using Zoom, muting is something that's second nature. But make sure that you, since you are on mute, make sure that you unmute yourself when it's time to speak. And secondly, silence those desktop notifications. So if you're not presenting, it might not seem like a big deal because you're not sharing your screen, but you never know what opportunities might pop up at an APM conference. You could get into a conversation with someone, and since it's virtual, that individual could ask you to, hey, can you show me some research or some of the work that you've already done? And now you're sharing your screen. So you do not want notifications to pop up in the middle of a screen share. So if you have a Microsoft computer, Microsoft helps you out with their focus assist. You could just click that and it could silence your desktop notifications. But if you are a Mac user, you could click the Muzzle app. And it's a great app that you could download that can silence all of the notifications. Like as you can see the example with email, Facebook, Slack, all of the things. You just don't want those things popping up while you are showing your screen. Secondly, virtual background. So if you do not have a non-distracting background, a virtual background can be a great benefit to you um, during a conference. So, and also with Zoom, you don't actually need a gr green screen to do that. But I do want to make note that you do have to have a strong processing like camera and able to have enabled um, to have a virtual background. So if you are really struggling with that, it might just be your computer to pull up a virtual background. So you can also look up other options if that's not working for you, but it's just something to think about so you can be the most prepared for the APAM conference. Thirdly, catch up your appearance using Zoom. So if you go to the video option of Zoom, you're able to click the touch up my appearance. So it's using the capability that your smartphone has with their um, selfie shot. So that you're able to just smooth out your skin. Zoom will do the same thing for you. So it could keep you looking your best. And lastly, adding your contact information to your display name. So adding an email address eliminates an additional barrier for connecting with people during the conference or after the conference. I know for our typical Zoom users, it's really easy just to open up the chat function. My only word of advice is please make sure that you are checking who you're sending your chat to, because sometimes the chat settings are, are set to all attendees and participants. So just make sure you check that box to see that you're sending it to the person you want to talk to and you're not sending your message to everyone. So APM has some great features to help you navigate the conference. So before I pull it up, I just wanna talk about the importance of creating a profile so people to to get to know you. Yes, I talked about the pre-work of going to LinkedIn and doing all that. It's just so much easier if you create a profile from APM. So then all of your information is in one place. You're able to fill out your schedule, favorite the sessions you want to attend, and leave comments for authors and connect with other attendees. So that also eliminates the need to send that cold email if you're too nervous about that. The only thing I would like to make note of with these platforms, they're only as dynamic as the people who use them. So if more people use the platform, you could get so much from it. So if you notice, let's say you left a comment for an author and you notice that there's not a lot of buzz, 
sending that email is just a great back, just a great backup or another touch point to make sure that you are sending a message across that you're interested in the individual's work. And let me click this link. So if you haven't checked it out, please check out how to navigate the online program. Program. It's important to do this ahead of time. I know like now that things are virtual, it can lead into a little bit of procrastination because you're now you're not actually have to physically prepare and go through transportation to go to the conference. Now it's, it's in your living room, but things come up last minute all the time. So if you have time to sit down, browse the sections, the policy areas, who's going to be in the room, please do that because that can help you really make the most of it. And let me click the organization index. This is great because you get to see who's going to be at the conference. And let me pull up an example. So let's say you're interested in Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. You can click that and then they can show you the, pr the presentation that it's going to be. So when you scroll down, you can read about what this presentation is about, but you can also see that someone from this foundation is going to be the discussant. So if you're interested in that work, working there, that might be a great connection you can make to speak with that person. So it's a roundabout way, but it's also another touch point you can get in and get direct information from these individuals. So let's reconnect. To me personally, this is the most important part of the presentation about how do you keep these connections after the conference is done. Um, I'm going to make a broad assumption that this might not be your first conference. If it is, congratulations. If it's not, maybe you can relate to how I keep falling into these, these circles about you go to a conference, you make great connections, life gets busy, life goes on, and then you meet up with these same people the following year, and no love lost, but you didn't really make enough touch points to build work with them. It's just the, hey, how are you? How's life going? So APM is such a dynamic conference that you can do so much more than just give a friendly wave to someone. So the first thing is extend beyond the next day follow-up. So next day follow-up is so customary. Um, when you get the business card or you make the connection, you talk about, it was great meeting you. You highlight some points you talk about, and that's it. But if you can continuously check in with that individual, that is even more dynamic and more powerful. And checking in can be sending thought leadership articles, congratulations on new jobs, research opportunities, and the more touch points that you do with that individual, when a job opening comes up, um, grant opportunities, research opportunities, you will be a person on their mind compared to a person that just sent them an email the day after a conference. So calendar invites are a great way to help establish that because as I said before, life gets super busy and we just forget. So making a calendar invite to remind you to send a touch point is a great way for you to continuously check in with someone without it feeling like a job. Follow on social media. So social media is where we pretty much get all our information for better or worse but it's just a great way for you to keep in touch with the people you met at the conference. And that will also help you when you're creating those touch points with individuals. And stay on top of trends in your field or interests. So similar to Twitter, Twitter trends that are like nicely organized, it's so important to know the buzz about your field. Yes, it creates great talking points, and connection that you can make with the attendees and presenters about the work, but I'm also thinking about your LinkedIn accounts. 
if you're thinking about how can I make more posts on LinkedIn, talking about what's trending in your field is a great way to share thought leadership articles, to share what you're thinking, or even to highlight your own work. And I just want to make another little point about LinkedIn. If your LinkedIn is not updated yet, please, 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 please update your LinkedIn before you reach out to anyone. Because LinkedIn is usually the first place people will look you up because they have no reference of you. You could write a beautiful email, but people still like, okay, I'm interested in who this person is. And many of us have our LinkedIn attached in the signing part and the signature part of our emails. But if you don't, um, this is a great time to update your LinkedIn with a new picture. Um, if you haven't been posting a lot on LinkedIn, it'll be great to start sharing articles or reposting information. And if you have recently done some great work, put that on your LinkedIn account. Let your LinkedIn really be a one-stop shop so people can get a take of who you are as a student, scholar, researcher, or practitioner. So if you have any questions about how to navigate the APM conference, please reach out to me at ashleykazigolden at gmail.com. And I would love to respond to you. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening to this presentation. I wish you only the best at the conference. It's a wonderful opportunity for you to grow and learn more as a researcher. So congratulations again, and I wish you the best.